optimistic he's ever been in his the journey that we've taken with him. You remember when he was on the boat getting rid of Trinity's body, he says, you know, it's time for me to embrace my family and soon maybe one day I'll be rid of the dark passenger and he goes home and he thinks he's on his second honeymoon with Rita. And what does he find? His wife dead and his son sitting in a pool of blood. And he knows that that moment is responsible. So, dealing with all of that is going to um, you know, take him uh, and make, it's going to make a really interesting season five because, of course, Dexter is going to deal with grief and all of the human emotions that one would feel in his own very, very unique fashion. So it will not take a form that you will expect. But <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very good handle. I'm going to steal that because <laughs> he is going to. Last year he was so like thinking, can I have it all? That was with a wife who took care of everything, and now he's going to be dealing with being a single dad of three kids, his job, and of course, his familiar, the dark passenger who will never let him go. People are getting close to figuring it out. And really? Well, okay, I don't so want to know that they're, they're on this trail. How do you know that whole conjecture? Yeah, it's just in the case of the people are getting in the production line because that's a huge risk. It is, it is, and, and you can only tease the audience with that so much. Um, but it, you always we always start with like what in real life is what happens. In real life, when a spouse is killed, 90% of the time, it's either the husband or the wife who died. Uh -huh. So, that's... And, and, and uh, you know, Dexter's alibi, he's on a boat, what? Boating of... So, if there's, there are a lot of things that he's going to have to, to, to deal with, but it's not going to be handled in, the, in a traditional procedural, you know, sort of boring, wrapping up loose ends kind of way. It, it, and I can't say anything more than that. Well, can you tell us? No, go ahead. Can you tell us about about uh, Peter Weller and Julia Stiles? Well, Julia Stiles plays this um, woman who literally sort of thrust into Dexter's life at a time which he's because of what's happened. He's so every bit of humanity that he's been able to cobble together over the years has been so attacked by this, that, that, that he, has to, he has to keep it all for, for his children and, and for his sister. And so he doesn't want to deal with anyone new. And yet he's put in a situation where he has to deal with this woman who's got a lot of damage and a lot of baggage. And um, it becomes a very interesting, she becomes a very interesting part of the, the path he takes to atonement, which is this is really what this year is about, is how does Dexter atone for the fact that he's responsible for his wife's death. How does a serial killer forgive himself? Yes? Something about going on without her? Well, we love Melissa. I love Melissa to death, and we miss her all the time, but we have Chip Johansson as a new showrunner, and he brought in Manny Cotto, uh, and we still have, you know, the, the stalwarts uh, from uh, writers who've been with us since year one, and it's been seamless, and they, uh, it's been great because it's brought in new energy, and also we wanted, we had already decided last year that we didn't want to go into uh, the same formula of having one sort of major adversary that you met early on, like the John Lithgow character or the uh, Jimmy Smith's character. And so it really required a way to recalibrate things and yet at the same time deliver the same pleasure to the audience. And, and so having these guys come in who are huge fans of the show and so smart and bringing in new energy, it was such a, a such a great sort of creative buzz. We had a, you know, we're midway through the season and I, it's a quarter of a year and it's as if they've been with us for, I mean, it's, it's just been seamless. How do you guys keep the science of the uh, forensics fresh? It's, you know, you, we have a, an expert who works with us in the show as, as, a, as a tech person, and 
so you can just keep up to date with what is used by police. What we don't do, we don't, we're, we're not the CSI kind of flashy make-believe forensics where, I don't know, they can go in your nose and down your throat and, uh, uh, and find a bullet and come back out and say, here it is. I, we really try to play by the rules in terms of, you know, how long a DNA test takes and what the limitations of the top forensics are. This show is not a procedural, and it's but we want those things to be real. Because the conceit of the show is so unreal. We want everything else to feel real. Okay. So you were talking about like this half of a crazy year, so I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about the Emmy nomination. Okay. And what your reaction was to John Lithgow getting a nomination. Thrill oh, beyond belief. He was such a joy to work with because this is a man who's a huge actor that had been a you know a huge television star already, a Tony Award winning Broadway actor, was so distinguished and he came in um, and just sort of got into the total vibe of the show. Because we've had this sort of core group of actors who have worked together from obviously from the pilot. We shot the pilot in Miami through the course of three hurricanes and let me tell you nothing binds you together with people that going through some hurricanes in a little hotel together. And just just jumped in and, and was so part of the team and was just a joy to work with. Dexter 